My name is Janet Freeman Daly. I am a metastatic lung cancer patient. I was healthy and active when I developed a, a light cough, kind of a <coughs> and we were going to be going on a trip, so I asked the doctor for antibiotics, which made no difference. When we came back from the trip, everyone on the plane got an upper respiratory infection. My husband and son got over it in a week, and I started coughing up blood, and we said, that's not right. So I went back to the doctor, got more antibiotics, which did nothing, so they decided to do an x-ray. They didn't let me leave the clinic until they did a CT scan. And by the time I got home, they called me and said, you have something in your lung that looks like carcinoma. I was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer, stage 3A, non-small cell. I had aggressive chemo and radiation, and that shrunk the tumors, but it didn't take care of the problem. We thought maybe we could take a uh, take the lung out now that the tumors had shrunk and I went through 16 tests in 15 days to discover that the tumor uh, cancer had already progressed and was now up on my collarbone. So at that point however I had learned of genomic testing and clinical trials in online patient groups and I arranged to get my tumor tested from these lovely lymph nodes and they tested it for a 10 gene panel under the Lung Cancer Mutation Consortium protocol, but I was negative for everything. So more chemo followed by more radiation, which again took care of all the known tumors, but by my first scan it was already in my other lung. My doctor told me I'd be on chemo for the rest of my life. However, right after the scan I happened to be visiting my nephew in Denver, and it occurred to me that I had my test done at the University of Colorado, which is in Denver, and I just called to ask if I could go over and say thank you for letting me be in the clinical trial. And the head of the program came down to talk to me and said, we have two new genomic tests. I said, oh really? And I asked them if one of them was for ROS1 because I'd learned from another patient in an online group that ROS1 might be common in patients who are younger, never smokers, adenocarcinoma, and negative for the other mutations. And he said, yes, one of them's ROS1. I said, do you have any tissue left? He said, yes. I said, go for it. Within a week, he came back and told me that I had an amazing ROS1 rearrangement. And once we determined that my tissue was indeed a progression of my cancer, I joined a clinical trial. I joined that trial to take a pill, crizotinib, in November of 2012. And I have had no evidence of disease ever since for over five years. When I was diagnosed with lung cancer, being a research and science geek, I asked around and one of my friends who was actually a very active advocate for kidney cancer, you might know the name ePatient Dave, um, recommended an online group to me. And I participated in Inspire and that's how I learned about ROS1, clinical trials, genomic testing. Since then, I've gotten involved in many online patient groups. They are a wonderful source of support. You can meet other patients with your type of cancer, going to hospitals near you, having the same kind of treatments, dealing with the same side effects, and it's just been terrific. Since then, it, things have continued to evolve. We have lung cancer social media on Twitter, which goes by the hashtag LCSM, but also a lot of these patient groups are now starting to organize around particular genomic drivers. So we have one based on ROS1 for all types of cancers around the world that's called the um, ROS Wonders. You can find us in a group on Facebook under ROS1 Positive Cancer. We also have a web page at ROS1Cancer.com. And other groups have since been following our lead. So there's now a group for ALK Positive. There's a group called EGFR Resistors. And there's a separate group called Exxon 20 Group. And all of these are organized with patients that are forming collaborations with researchers, advocacy groups, clinicians. It's a great place to focus the information about how you get treated, get diagnosed, and how you live with having those types of cancers. Uh, there are a lot of clinical trials out there, and they are of on different things. Some of them are just testing the same drugs that are already out there. Some of them are comparing um, a new treatment to an existing treatment. But for those of us who have particularly particular driving genomes, clinical trials may be our best option for treatment. 
For instance, with my particular one, ROS1, once I progress on this pill, there are no approved treatments aside unless I want to try chemo again. But there are several clinical trial options. So uh, these patient groups, especially if you have a genomic driver, are a great way to learn about what your clinical trial options are or to find a source of a second opinion for a doctor who can help you find one. It can be overwhelming to go on clinicaltrials.gov and try and find a clinical trial that works for you. But there are also several clinical trial matching services. If you go to the lung cancer advocacy organizations or other cancer advocacy organizations, they can usually help you find one. And that can help narrow it down quite a bit. If you're thinking about a clinical trial, be thinking about are you willing to travel? Uh, can you afford to cover the medical costs associated? While the trial usually pays for the medications and the specific treatments in the trial, at least in the U.S., our insurance pays for the medical costs, the labs, the scans. Um, be thinking about how much time you can take away from work and family and how much risk you're willing to take. There's different levels of risks in clinical trials. However, uh, boy, it, it sure worked for me. <laughs>